Take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading, if you would, please, to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, please. Ephesians chapter 3, two verses for us to read together this morning, verses 20 and 21, the last two verses of chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians, and we'll just read them in unison together this morning. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. Let's begin together on verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 3. Ready? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And let's pray together. Father, add your blessing to the reading of uh, these scriptures here this morning. Lord, thank you for the wonderful music this morning. And Lord, it's been good to sing praises to you. Lord, thank you for the good spirit that's in this place today. And Father, we're asking you that you would make each of our hearts ready to receive your word this morning. Lord, we need your help to focus and to concentrate so that we would give you our undivided attention today, and that each of us would be still and be able to hear the still small voice of the Spirit of God as he speaks to us through your word. So Lord, I pray you'll bless the special as it's sung, and I pray you would use it to prepare our hearts, that it would be good ground the word of God could fall into and bring forth fruit in our lives. It's in Jesus' name I ask it, amen. Listen to the waves of the ocean Crushing with the rhythm of praise Listen to their song of devotion Dancing with the sun's golden rays Listen to the music of nature Floating from the birds of the sky Singing the song of their Lifting his praises on high, the heavens declare the glory of God. All nature is singing his majesty. The mountains prepare a tribute of love. Creation is filled with his honor, glory, and praise. Listen to the song of the sunrise. Listen to the voice of the light. Watch as the moon gives the signal, starting the music of night. 
Listen to the song of creation. Listen to the language of praise. Filling the earth and the heavens. Praising the ancient of days. The heavens declare the glory of God. Our nature is singing his majesty. The mountains prepare a tribute of love. Creation is filled with his honor, glory, and praise. Creation is filled with his honor, glory, and praise. Praise. When we bow before you in prayer as we come to your the preaching of your word this morning. And Lord, we're asking that <clears throat> you would help each of us to give you our undivided attention and to your word. I want to thank you for the Bible this morning and thank you, Lord, for giving your word and inspiring men of old. And then, Lord, preserving it for us that we hold copies in our hands this morning. Lord, we do not believe this just to be the words of men or the words of a man. We believe it to be in truth the words of God. And I pray, Lord, that each of us would give that word authority in our life today. Help me as I bring the truth this morning and help each individual as they listen today. May your will be accomplished in each of our lives this morning. And I'll thank you in advance for what I believe you'll do. It's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. <clears throat> when I was a kid, I liked to read comic books. Anybody read comic books when they were little? Yeah, that was before video games and uh, computers and even before VCRs and, and DVDs. But comic books were great, you know. Um, we had Archie and Superman and Batman and all those great comic books. And, you know, in the back of those comic books, there were always advertisements for, for cool stuff the kids ought to have. You know, gum that turns your teeth black and, you know, uh, magic stuff and practical jokes. And, but the thing that, that really caught my eye was the X-ray vision glasses. I could be like Superman. You know, guys had a picture there, a guy looking at his hand and you could see all the bones in it, you know. I thought, well, that's what I need right there. You know, that would be cool. And so, you know, you, you mail off for it and, and you wait something like 52 weeks for delivery, you know. And uh, it, it, you forget it's even coming. And one day it, it showed up in the mail. Man, I remember being excited about that and, and take that out of the box, you know. And, and it's, of course, cardboard, you know, with, with red cellophane. <laughs> but I'm excited. And I take those things and fit them on my head and get my hand and look at it. And nothing. Red fuzziness, that's all it is. Man, I, it got to be the light, you know. You uh, go in the bathroom and turn the light out and look at it again, and still nothing. And man, I remember how disappointed I was for the first time, probably realizing that uh, you don't always get what you expect. I remember when our son Andy was born. My wife gave birth to him, and uh, he was by cesarean section. And uh, the day after, she was finally looking forward to finally having a good meal. And as she was looking over the menu in the hospital, now <clears throat> understand, hospital menu and food were different then than what they are now. And uh, the, uh, she saw on the menu uh, fruit in a bowl. And she thought, oh, that sounds so good. And uh, so she decides to order the fruit in a bowl. And her meal came, and her sandwich was there, she ordered, and the other things. And there was in a bowl, an apple sitting. <laughs> that was her fruit in a bowl right there. And we laughed about that, but she was disappointed, I'm sure. Now, you've all, we've all had experiences in life where we got less than what we expected. Maybe you've ordered some, and a lot of with the online ordering, uh, that has become a disappointment. It looks so good in the picture 
and then when you get it in reality, you think, what is, what is this? It's uh, not, what I, not what it looked like in the picture. And so it's, a, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's always a wonderful thing when you get what you expect, but it is an amazing thing when you get more than you expected. That's always a blessing. And can I tell you this morning, with God, you always get more. With God, you always get more. With God, you always get more than you expect. That's the wonderful news and the good news. You get more. God is, I think of the little song the children sing, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And that's not just a song for little kids. That would be a song for some big kids to remember. That God is able to do, as the text tells us this morning, that He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You know, it's amazing uh, what the Spirit of God does here in giving these words uh, to the Apostle Paul. Uh, I think he's trying to uh, get across to us. And, you know, you understand the God trying to communicate the, His Word to us and trying to get us to grasp it is not an easy thing to do. You know, when you're the most difficult, you've heard me say this before, the most difficult class to teach are, are probably the little ones, the, the three, four, and five-year-olds. Because, you know, uh, two little kids were talking and said, my teacher said that um, Lot and his wife and their daughters uh, had to take their flee, you know, had to flee the city. And his wife looked back and she got turned into a pillar of salt. And the little boy said, that's too bad. What happened to their flee? See, we, we use a word like that, and they're thinking, well, my dog has a flea, so I, you know, we, what happened to the flea? You know, the little girl who drew the picture of the old man driving a car, and there was a couple in the back seat. Teacher said, well, who is this? She said, that's God driving Adam and Eve out of the garden. Because <laughs> God drove them out of the Garden of Eden. But in their mind, they're thinking the only drive they know is when we get in the car and go for a drive. So you understand the difference in trying to communicate to them to where they don't get the wrong idea. Now you think about, that's just us at, at whatever age we are. <clears throat> you know, uh, a 50, 60, maybe Miss Linderman at 30, trying to teach those little four and five year olds, you know, uh, uh, try to get them the concept, get them to understand what we're saying and not misunderstand what we're saying. Think about God trying to explain it to us and get us to grasp what he's trying to say. And here he's trying to get us to understand just how amazing and how incredible and how awesome and how big God really is. And so he stacks some words upon one another that he doesn't do anywhere else. And, 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 and he says, basically, he's saying that God is just incredibly incredible. He's extravagantly extravagant. He's awesomely awesome. He's outrageously outrageous. He's fantastically fantastical. He's amazingly amazing. He's infinitely infinite. He's ably able in all his ability. You can't really fully express all that he's saying, and yet he just he cannot hardly compound enough words together to get us to see just how big God really is. And how awesome God really is. There's no word that can be crafted that can contain all of who God is and all of what God can do. God is indescribable. He's indescribably indescribable. God is just amazing. Now, I want you to notice what he says. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Notice, God is able. And I want to talk to you about that subject for a few minutes this morning. God is able. And number one, I want you to notice God is able because His power is above us. And that should be enough said right there. God's power is above us. God is able to do anything He wants to do. With God... All things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. That would be enough right there to make our hearts beat with confidence. 
That would be enough right there to say, okay, that settles the matter. I know that He is an able God. God can do anything that He wants to do. There are times you and I have to, have to just say to somebody, I'm sorry I'm not able to do that. Whatever the reason may be, the time constriction, the financial restriction, the geographical, whatever it may be, we just say, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not able to do that. You realize God doesn't say, I'm not able. God is able. He is able. Then it says, He is, and an not just an able God, He's an exceeding able God. But He's not just an exceeding able God, He's exceeding abundantly able God. But He's not just an exceeding abundantly able God. He's an exceeding abundantly above all we ask God. But He's not just an exceeding abundantly above all we ask God. He's an exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think God. That's an amazing thing. What He's saying is God will exceed your expectations. God can exceed and He does exceed our expectations. Okay? God, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from most unrighteousness. <laughs> uh, you know, if He just said he'd, he'd forgive me of a sin, I'd be happy. But He said He forgives me of all sin. Well, wait a minute. What about the sins I haven't committed yet? No, He's going to forgive those too. How many sins, how many of your sins were future when Jesus died on the cross? All of them. I don't think anybody's that old in here, are we? No, they were all future. He hadn't been thought of yet. But He died for your sins. And so He's ready and able to forgive all of your sins. Well, that's exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. What a, what a great God. I thought about that in Sunday school this morning when we were talking about the children of Israel going through the Red Sea. It's one thing to all night long have those waters part. And, and God part those waters. And, but if you remember, it says the Israelites went through on dry land. God, God didn't just part the waters. Usually, <clears throat> I've been on enough ball fields uh, when there's been a rain delay or something and the rain finally stops, but you've got puddles at different places and muddy spots in different places. And, you know, you used to uh, dig a hole and try to drain the water out a little bit and then you'd throw some sawdust in there and, you know, you'd try to rake it up and try to get it to where it's playable. But God, when He got rid of that water and He took out His big heavenly blow dryer and He blew it all dry. And they went through on dry ground. But wait a minute. When the Egyptian army started to go through, <laughs> He made it all muddy again. And they lost their wheels and God had them get stuck in the mud. And then he had all the water come down and drown them all. You know what God was saying? Israel, I can do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think. That's God. He's powerful. His power is far above us. Way above us. God can do anything. It's Jericho when he says march around the walls of Jericho. And, and march around once a day and on the seventh day seven times and then then blow the trumpets and give a shout. And guess what? He said the walls are going to fall down. And they fell down. But wait a minute. Remember how big the walls were? They were big enough to run chariots on. They are big enough people to live on. Now that wall that may be 12 feet wide or more, could be 16 feet wide, if those walls fall down, you got quite a stack of rubble. And it's still formidable to crawl over that. But you know what the Bible says? Those walls fell down what? Flat. And they marched right in. Exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. That's what God can do. His power is above us. His power is infinite. He always <clears throat> provides at the right time, in the right way, with everything you need, and then some. God is able to do that. He's the God of and then some. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions, they fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. She played it for an offertory. God's able to do more. God is 
faithful. He didn't just make a single drop of water. He made oceans of water. He didn't just create one star. He made galaxies. He didn't just make a single kind of bird. He created thousands of kinds of birds. He didn't just make a hill. God made the Rocky Mountains. He didn't just make the sun. God made sunsets and sunrises. He exceeds all expectations. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. That's what God can do. Nothing can separate us from His salvation and there's no guardrails against His grace. There's no containers that can hold His compassion. There's no restrictions to someone experiencing His righteousness. Now, if God can do all that and He's able to do all that, ask yourself a question. What can God do with me? Think about that. <clears throat> if God can do all that and He's that powerful, what can He do with my heart? What can God do with my hands? What can, what can God do with my life? What can He do with my gifts and the abilities He's given to me? What can God do in my family? What can He do with my friends? But let me ask you this. What can He do with your challenges? What can He do with your weaknesses? What can God do with your problems? What can God do with your disappointments? Can I submit to you this morning, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. He's able to do that. I'm glad that God isn't just limited to what I ask or think. Because sometimes I don't ask big enough and I don't ask for the things I ought to ask for and sometimes my thinking is just stinking thinking. So I'm glad that at times He'll just do exceeding abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. Do you ever have God do something for you and you see and say, boy, God, and then it kind of smites you because you know you didn't even really pray? God just did it for you anyway. Huh? Because He's that kind of a God. He can do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. I don't know what God knows. I don't see what God sees. I don't understand things the way God understands things. I'm not where God is. His ways are far above my ways. His thoughts are far above my thoughts. So I don't try to take the place of God. And by the way, I'm okay with that. And, and I'm pretty sure God is too. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't need anybody being Him. God is God. God is able. He has power that is above us. But secondly, I want you to notice, God is also able because there's a power within us. Notice He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh, where church? In us. <clears throat> God's able to do abundantly beyond I could ask or think. That power dwells where? In us, us as believers, us as those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior. That power dwells in us. It's dynamite power. It's explosive power. It's awesome power. There's a tremendous power given to us. It's the nature of God. It's the person of the Holy Spirit of God. And He comes to indwell every believer when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And we don't live the life on our own. We don't live it in our strength. We don't do what God wants us to do just by our willpower. We do it by His power. Power within us. I remember reading about certain uh, computer places, uh, help desks, that people, they, 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 they write little blogs about people who call in, you know, and say their computer doesn't work. And you know the first question they always ask when people call in and say, my computer isn't working, the first thing they always ask is, is it, is it on? Is it plugged in? Sometimes that's all the problem is. is if, I, if you go into your computer, if you have a, a, a desktop computer, and very rarely do people have those anymore, uh, but you can, if the screen is blank and there's nothing there, you think, well, it's broken. 
It's not working. No, turn it on. No, plug it in. <laughs> you know, get it connected to the power source. Uh, the the way my uh, printer is set up, I have uh, they have all plugs in underneath where my feet are, and at times that printer gets real touchy. And if I if I hit the where it plugs into the power corner there with my foot, I'll, I'll print something and nothing happens. And I used to figure out what well, what's going on, and now I know that when that happens, I reach under my foot and I just shove that a little bit, and guess what? It lights up and it starts printing. Okay, it has to be connected to the power, not to the foot. <laughs> Put the mask back on, Danny, all right? <laughs> you got to get plugged in. You got to get connected. You know what happens to many people? They got, they're not plugged into God. They're not plugged into the power that's within us as believers. If God gave us the Holy Spirit as the one called alongside to help us, why are you living the Christian life without Him? Why are you doing it without acknowledging Him? Before you got up today, when you got up, when you got prepared for church, when you came to the building, did you say, Spirit of God, minister to me today. Minister the things of God to me today. Help me understand the Word of God today. Did you ask Him for His help? He's a power at work within us. Man, you listen, flip the switch. Get turned on to the Spirit of God so that power can flow. Receive all that God has for you. Receive the strength and the power and the guidance and the wisdom. Notice what Paul said here. What the Lord will give us the power and the ability to do. Back up a little bit in verse 17 of Ephesians 3. Well, let's back up to verse 16. Paul is praying and he says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able, that, that Spirit that's in us is going to help us to be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. We have power. He gives us the power to understand the love of God. The power to allow the love of God to flow through us to other people. That isn't normal. That isn't, isn't available to those with just natural knowledge, our natural ability. Listen, Jesus didn't save you and then go on vacation. Jesus saved you and dwells in your heart by faith, and the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us, and He's there to work in us, and we'll find out a little bit to work through us. But He lives in us. He takes up permanent residence in us. And we're to grasp His love. We're to understand that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, Romans 5. And so we love people. Listen, what, we say, what's going on in the world? Everybody's so concerned about all the hate, hate, hateful things that are going on. Why a fellow would go and shoot up a, a synagogue or people have gone in and shot up churches or why are we sending bombs to people or why are people yelling at people in restaurants and confronting people? Why all this hatred? i tell you why. Because we've gotten away from God. America, you didn't want God. And you're not going to get good if you don't have God. And you won't make America great again until you make America God again. And we put God back in His rightful place. And, and that allows us, hey, as God's people, we can only show love to others because God does it through us. Because we grasp the way God loves people. And we understand we're going to love folks because God loves them. 
And we're going to know every dimension of His love because it says it's the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. There's nothing like the love of God. I think there's an old song that, that talks about the love of God. And it says, uh, could, uh, doesn't it say, could we with ink the ocean fill? And, and uh, were every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the whole contain the scroll, though stretched from sky to sky. Be impossible. It's, 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 it's so amazing. That's why the songwriter said, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. You ever, it, we, we just get overwhelmed with the love of God. How great he loves us and how great his love is. And we'll never know that the, the complete <clears throat> breadth and height and depth that, that He has for us. But we have the ability to be filled with His love and to have His love active in our life. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is, what's the first one? Love. Top of the list. Very first thing. So well, I just, I just, there's just some people I hate. Well, then you're not a Spirit-filled Christian. Top of the list is love. You'll love those whom God loves. God is able. His power is above us. God is able. His power is within us. And then thirdly, I want you to notice God is able. His power works through us. Notice again Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. To Him be glory in the church. That means, who's the church? That's us. That's you and me. The church is assembled right now. Tomorrow, if you say, hey, I'm going down to church, what you really mean is, I'm going down to the church building. Okay? Today, you can say, I'm going to church. Because the church is here. Understand? We're that, that's us. So if God's going to show His glory in the church, He's got to do it through us. Or He has no way to do it. And so He wants to work, not only in us, but He wants to work through us. Our desire and every believer's desire ought to be that God would be glorified in our life. He wrote to the, Paul wrote to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians 10.31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. You understand? All to, all to put the spotlight on God. It is now about Him, not about me. He must increase and I must decrease. But more than that, I must die daily. And He must live in me. That's the prayer. That ought to be the passion of every believer. We had an interesting discussion Friday in our group at, at Madison Prison where we take the RU Inside program. And one of the men was asking about pride. And, of course, several of the men thought, you know, it's a, I think there's, there's, uh, there's times it's good to have pride. If you study for a test and you pass a test, you can be proud of yourself for passing that test. And so we began to have a little discussion about pride, Brother Yoder, <laughs> in that class. And, and you understand, I challenge the men, I'll challenge you. Go through your Bible. Look up every time the word pride is used in the Bible. And show me one time where it's used in a good light. Now, you ought, you ought to do it, but I'll, I'll help your study along. You don't find one. Not one time. The Bible says God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. You know what? When someone has pride, you know what it's all about? What's the middle letter of pride? I. It's all about me. 
one of the fellows there was so good, he said, you know, I know that pr- when I want to win an argument, when I want to prove that I'm right, pride. That's why the Bible says only by pride comes contention. So there's an argument, it's just somebody proving I'm going to be right and I'm going to make sure you know I'm right. It's pride. Middle, word of, middle letter of pride is I. It's, it's about me. But once I'm, listen, and I understand, someone without Christ, that's how they live. Brother Yoder uh, worked for years um, with athletes, a trainer for football teams and sports teams. And he'll tell you firsthand the ego on those men. The pride on those guys is huge. Huge. It's all about them. It's all about what I want, what I need, what I think. And that's, that's not unusual for those who are lost, but once you're saved, it's no longer about I. It's about Christ. It's about Him. I want Him in the spotlight. I want to stay back. It's always about Him. Make sure that people see His splendor. I want them to see His beauty. Let others see His goodness. Let others see His kindness. Let others see His love. Don't don't people say, oh, what a wonderful Christian they are. No, they ought to look and say, boy, what a wonderful Savior they have. Put the spotlight on the one it belongs on. Not on you and me. You have to be so careful. And you say, well, you pray for me, Pastor. I just struggle with pride. Well, welcome to the human race. Everybody struggles with pride. That's, that's the human nature. Satan, the first sin there ever was, was the sin of pride. That was Satan's sin. By the way, that was the main sin of Sodom. So oh, God destroyed them for their abomination. Oh, that made the list. But you read the book of Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 16. He destroyed them for pride. Fullness of bread, idleness. Not helping the poor. Then he said they commit abomination. It made the list, but it wasn't number one. Pride. Satan said, I will be like God. I will be like the Most High. I, 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 I. We're probably never more like Satan than when we get proud and we display pride in our life. When, when pride comes in, the glory goes out. The power goes out. Let His glory be known. Let His glory be revealed. Let, let God be known. Let, let God be uncovered. What do we want people to see when, we, when they come to dinner day in two weeks? I want them to see God. I want them to see the glory of God. I want to see this, him that He loves them and He cares for them and He sent His Son to die for them. That there is a Savior for their sin. That's us. Can say, preacher, do you think, you think we'll fill the house up and fill that tent up that we'll put up for the Turkey dinner Sunday? And I ask you the question, is God able? Is God able? 10,000 flyers? We're going to get 10,000 flyers out in the next uh, you know, uh, 12 days or 13 days? Is God able? Is God able to help us get the gospel into 10,000 homes? Our prayers are too little. remember years ago hearing Dr. Curtis Hudson preach on Psalm, I think it's Psalm 8110, the verse that George Mueller used to feed orphans and thousands of children through the years. It, is, it says this, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. I'd open my mouth real wide, but i got such a little mouth. It's a matter of perspective. And... and Dr. Hudson preach. he's saying, you know what the problem is? We have too many pucker mouth Christians. He said, why don't you open your mouth wide? Why don't you ask God for big things? He's able. He's able. 
But He's able to do exceeding above all that we could ask or think. He's exceedingly able. God, open thy mouth wide. Joshua, what do you want? Joshua says, well, what I really want, I want that sun to stand still for a while so we can win this battle. God said, okay. Now, science will tell you that's humanly impossible to do. We're we're spinning around at such a rapid rate, if all that stopped, we'd all be spots on the wall somewhere. But God can do whatever He wants. He's the one who holds it all together. So God made the sun stand still for Joshua. See, he, He opened His mouth wide, and God filled it. Hezekiah, I've heard your prayer. I'm going to give you 15 more years. Well, I want to sign. Well, okay, how about the, the dial out there? And uh, God says, I'll just move that forward 10 minutes. And the guy says, hey, anybody may go forward. May go backwards 10 minutes. And God said, okay. He backed time up. We get an extra hour next Saturday. He has a guy next 10 minutes. Pushed it back. Again, that's, that, say nobody can do that. God's able. God's able. What is it that you're looking at? What is it that stands before you? What, what Goliath, as David stands there and he asks all those guys, hey, what's your problem, man? There's that big guy uh, talking against God. Uh, somebody ought to knock his block off. David picked up those stones and picked up that sling and he said, let me have a shot at it. And he wasn't just hiding behind the bush and you know getting his chance for a good shot. The Bible says he ran towards him. But he, he cut him down. But David didn't do that. God did that. God did that. He's able. He's able. He's able. God is able. According to his power above us, according to his power within us, according to His power through us. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Years ago, I heard a little chorus, and it goes like this. Exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, that's what my God can do. Exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, that's what my God can do. He can save and He can heal. I'm so glad that I know He's real. Exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. That's what my God can do. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth this morning. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being an able God. An exceeding able God. An exceeding abundant able God. An exceeding abundant above all we ask able God. An exceeding abundant above all we ask or think able God. Lord, I'm asking you this morning, that You would help us to take to You everything. That Your power is available, it's far above us, but yet it is within us, and You desire to work through us. I'm asking You, Lord, this morning for people who have tried to, they're trying to live, they're trying to do the, do the things in the Christian life, but they're doing it in their own power, their own strength. And they're frustrated this morning. They're disappointed. Lord, may they yield themselves to the Spirit of God within them to give them the power and the ability to live the Christian life. There's others today that are facing obstacles and facing challenges. 
And as the Israelites were, they were tempted to turn back and you told them to go forward. And God, I pray there'd be a number of people in this room today would say, I need to realize God is able. God can do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. His ways are high above, high, much higher than my ways. His thoughts are much higher than my thoughts. I'll trust God that He is able. And then, Lord, work in us and work through us that our lives might be for Your glory and Your honor. Help us to die to self that I am crucified with Christ and will allow Him to live through us in our lives.